All right, what's up? It's Jordan back here again, uh, updating the blog. I had a meet yesterday, and I wanted to tell you guys what I learned uh, on this training cycle, and hopefully, maybe that helps uh, some of you think about what you're going to do uh, with your upcoming meet prep, or if you're just trying to get strong. And uh, so, just a rehash of kind of what I did. <clears throat> I started out probably maybe 14 weeks out, and I started just with an accumulation block. I mean, I'm just doing block periodization stuff now, um, and I've kind of come to the conclusion that uh, unless you're an early intermediate or novice trainee that whether you like it or not your training is going to resemble block periodization even if you uh, you know kind of denounce block periodization and say oh percentages don't work and this and the other uh, I mean you can say what you will but your training is going to look more and more like block you might not have planned deloads in there but you will have you know impromptu deloads you'll have you know periods where volume and intensity kind of are manipulated in order to you know take your strength up and so again it all ends up looking like block uh, in the end so even if you're reticent to sort of try that sort of stuff I, I just kind of think it all washes out in the end but uh, so what I did is about 14 weeks ago uh, I started did an accumulation block everything was you know five sets of five um, bench press squat press deadlift all had their own priority days and then I had to have a supplemental lift that I would do for another 25 reps or for 24 reps so I was doing 50 reps a week of either the competition lift or a variant that was very, very close to it. So like a very, very close variant to the competition lift that I used a lot was deficit deadlifts. I think that was my main pulling uh, lift. Uh, and so, you know, <clears throat> did that for three weeks and then went to a transmutation block. And all transmutation did for me is I switched uh, the rep range and the intensity. Uh, so one thing I really learned this time, I didn't use any cha chains, any bands, um, any sort of things like that and it's not because I don't think it's useful in certain applications uh, it's just for me it takes up too much time in the gym there's a lot of setup stuff to it and I just I mean this cycle speaks for itself I really didn't need to uh, add any complexity to my to my stuff so I you know if people want to geek out on bands and chains it's fine I just think if from a training economy standpoint you don't need to use that sort of stuff uh, I think it's a, more of a distraction than anything else I know it can it can be useful at times and you know kind of break up the monotony if you get really excited about it go ahead and use it but it's definitely not a necessity in order to get strong um, so you know for variety that's fine but I just don't find that it's a, a huge huge thing that you need you have to, it's not like something you have to have in your training something you do have to have and one thing that I'll, I'll share with you is that uh, what I'm gonna do with my next cycle it's gonna be a lot of the same but I'm gonna increase volume and that's the one thing that has to increase over time, you know. So basically, you want to use the least amount of volume that you need in order to drive the adaptation, and that's going to have to increase over time. So uh, my deadlift volume is real, real high, and I think that's really, really working out well for my deadlift. I think I can do, I think I need a little bit more volume on my squat and my uh, my bench in order to keep everything moving. So I'm going to add some sets, um, add some reps, just to the total weekly volume. And for my next accumulation phase, so I might do five, uh, six sets of five, or I might do five sets of six on a supplemental lift or something like that, or I might add, uh, you know, a squat variant after benching one day, or before benching, it might be three sets of three or three sets of four, something like that, just to add a little bit extra volume, not, not go too crazy with it. And so, you know, the idea is I get more practice, I get more volume, and that's all gonna work. Um, the other thing that I, you know, really learned on this block, I didn't, like, I mean, I have percentages listed out, but I don't really follow them. Uh, and I don't say that, you know, to say, go off the reservation, do what you will. It's it's just a goal. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a you have an idea when you go to the gym, you know, I want to hit about 85% for a single, and I want to do back off to 75% or something like that. Uh, but it's not set in stone. You know, you know you want a certain degree of strain, or as Mike Teixeira would say, a certain amount of fatigue you know after a session so you plan accordingly so I mean I had some really big numbers it, to me uh, at the end of the accumulation phase I, you know I squatted 405 five sets of five I think in the last set I did seven or eight reps I pulled 500 five sets of five off a deficit and I benched 315 five sets of five and none of those were the percentage you know that I was supposed to use but those were milestones that I, I wanted to hit and you know that was the appropriate amount of strain before a deload so, you know, I don't think, I think the percentages and the RPEs and everything else like that, those are all guiding, you know, uh, metrics in order to get you to do what you need to do. And really, it's you know, bust your ass. I mean, there's a guy at my gym, we call him Big Cam, and uh, he made a video, and it was really, you know, it's supposed to be funny, but it's true. It's, it's, you know, it's hard work. 
and that's what you have to do. Day in, day out, on the grind, hard work. There's nothing easy about this sort of stuff. And so, you know, I, uh, I don't know, I kind of wrestle with this idea of can you overtrain, can you, you know, do all this stuff, and I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I think you can under-recover based on, you know, if you're making poor nutritional choices, if you are really emotionally stressed, because we know that emotional stress is like more, is actually more stressful on the on a physical organ, on an organism than, than physical stress. Uh, but, you know, this the thing is you just got to show up to the gym and work hard. So, I mean, it's good to have a plan. I definitely like this programming thing, and that's something that I do for people. Uh, but one thing I really try to get across is that everything is just a, you, have a, you just have a plan going in the gym. Now, the exact percentages might not be, you know, uh, what you use for the day. A lot of times I use ranges, you know, percentage ranges, or, you know, put a little note in there, like, this should feel hard, or this should feel, you know, easy, or, or whatever, just so, you know, it would be easier if I was there and I could see the set, but since I'm not, you know, I have to give them more, more data. So something to consider using on your own is just, you know, verbalize or, or write down, like, what is the goal of the training session? If it's an accumulation phase, you know it's volume, and you know your technique should be on point, and you know that um, you need a certain amount of fatigue, so you know, jot that down so you have a note, and then maybe write a note after you finish your session. But uh, one thing I, I found that really helped me this cycle was having a plan. Every time I went to the gym, I had a number that I wanted to hit. And they were all, all these numbers were stuff that I, I probably wouldn't have migrated towards unless I just started thinking about it, like I had it in my brain. And so there's a lot of visualization, there's a lot of, you know, kind of thinking about it, like the 405, five sets of five. I mean, that was a huge, huge milestone for me to hit. And I've been thinking about it all week. I want to hit 405, five sets of five on a squat. And for me, that was, that was big. And so um, all this stuff ended up translating into uh, – you know, let's say I squatted 565 yesterday. I pulled 655, and I benched 385, missed 405 by an inch from lockout. So, uh, you know, in retrospect, I would have called for a higher squat. I would have called for a 400 bench, and I would have, I would have deadlifted the same because that's I pulled on my second attempt for the win. You really can't complain about doing something like that. And uh, yeah, um, big time assistance exercise I found that worked really, really well for me. Um, high volume deadlifts that brought my deadlift up. Uh, you know, I, I, I just stopped using the variations. I just started pulling from the floor more often. Um, that worked out okay for me. Um, let's see, I didn't front squat this cycle at all. I just did a bunch of either paused squats or box squats on my assistance lift. And that was fine. I prefer the pause squats because the box, I think, changes the mechanics a little too much for me, personally. Um, close grip, another staple. If you're not close gripping, I think you're missing out. And floor press really worked out uh, well for me. Uh, everything else, you know, is pretty standard. I don't think it has to be too complicated. I just think, you know, if you're not getting results, you have to consider two things. One, are you not doing enough volume to drive the adaptation? Or are you not recovering well enough? In most cases, I think it's not enough volume. Or people are trying to do too much volume in a session. So you know, the easiest thing would be to spread out volume over the course of many days. Or add another movement. Or add a training session. Or, or whatever. But, you know... Um, that's just my thing. Uh, this, you know, obviously, this conversation doesn't apply to people who are on a weekly periodized kind of program. Uh, this, I'm talking about blocks of months and months and months. So, yeah, things worked out uh, pretty well for me. Um, so, in total, you know, watch your volume. Make sure you have a plan when you go in the gym. Uh, you know, make take a lot of notes and think about what you're going to do in the gym. You know, have this sort of mental approach like this is what I'm going to do. I want to have a plan. You know, I want to hit this number by the end of this, you know, block or whatever, and uh, and always keep the competition variance uh, in, in with significant volume. So that's the update here uh, from barbellmedicine.com, uh, new new blog title if you uh, didn't catch that. And, uh, yeah, you can get me on Twitter, uh, Jordan the Coach. Um, that's on, on Twitter. You can follow me on there, or you can shoot me an email at strengthmd at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. See you.